the rest of the story. They called him the Little Fairy Boy. Other youngsters in the neighborhood called him Little Fairy Boy. The credit or the blame for which surely went to his mother. She detested violence, and she did everything she could to encourage sweetness in her son, Michael. Well, Michael not only turned out sweet, he became the biggest child pushover in Brooklyn. The other boys beat him up incessantly, took his sneakers, his clothing, his money. And shy, gentle Michael just accepted it and eventually reconciled himself to the nickname inspired by his dainty voice and his dainty ways, Fairy Boy. But this is the rest of the story. One day when Michael was barely 11, one of the many neighborhood bullies tried to steal his pet pigeon. Now, Michael loved that little bird, and he'd been caring for it diligently, and somehow when he saw this other older boy trying to take his pet, something snapped inside Michael's head. Suddenly, the child, disdained as Fairy Boy, became instead ferocious. Just lit into that would-be thief, flailing his fists like a windmill in overdrive. In one burst of emotion, a young lifetime of frustration poured forth and into the cringing body of the other boy, and the hitting, the hurting felt good, too good. From that day on, dishing out violence became a way of life for young Michael. Now he became the bully. Now he was the one beating up on the others, the one stealing their possessions, stealing their money. And before anyone knew what had happened, Michael was fully embarked on a life of crime. He picked pockets. He snatched jewelry. He mugged people in the streets. He held up currency exchanges and supermarkets. He fell into the company of other thugs. And even though he was younger and he was smaller, his viciousness quickly earned him leadership. Ordinary robberies became armed robberies. And then one arrest and then two, and eventually, more than Michael could count. But he didn't care. At last he fit in. At last he was somebody. And it hardly mattered if his criminal activity led him straight to the Center for Juvenile Delinquents. And that is precisely where it led. It was called the Tryon School for Boys, a school for bad boys. And before long, Michael was being marched in manacles to a cottage which was reserved for the incorrigibles. That's where the reform school's least reformable were held. In that special cottage, Michael spent a lot of time there. But somewhere on that road to jail or to the morgue, Michael encountered a school counselor named Bobby Stewart. And one day Bobby said, Hey, Mike, you'd be good at my old line of work. And as it turns out, Michael was good at that line of work. And the teenager became Stewart's protege, and he worked hard. And within just half a dozen years, within just six years, he had become a world celebrity. Now, I don't think I mentioned this J.D. Counselor, this juvenile delinquency counselor who made all the difference, the difference perhaps between life and death, had once been a professional boxer and a little fairy boy, the punching bag for every bully in Brooklyn, who then became the bully that he hated, then became the best that he could be, and you know him as undefeated heavyweight champion Mike Tyson, only now you know the rest of the story.